This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and welcome into another edition of the Draft Room Podcast right here on MVP Sports. I am joined with my co-host, my wide receiver compadre, as we... uh, by the way, JD, JD is the the co-host. JD, how are we doing? We're doing great, my guy. I don't know why, JD. This entire week, I used it a lot during D and D yesterday for no reason at all. I've just really liked the word compadre this week, and I have zero reason why because I have like zero Latin blood in me. Hi. Hey, sometimes we pick up words like like. There's so many things that like I think about from my my high school days and i'm mm-hmm. like i'm just gonna start saying that and i go through like a week of just saying <laughs> trust me i don't want to say some of the stuff that <laughs> he, he, here's here's the thing jd and many people aren't going to uh many people are going to be like either agree with this or not going to agree with this you say some things or think some things in high school that you should never think as an adult or as a person but you think no. it because you're like hey i'm uh I'm I'm a teenager and I think everything is funny. Uh, mm-hmm. The only blessing, JD, is that w- there's a little bit of a gap between us. When I was in high school, Twitter didn't exist, TikTok mm-hmm. didn't exist, Instagram didn't exist, Facebook was in the infancy of like my sophomore year was like the year when Facebook went from being just for college kids to being for everybody. Mm-hmm. Very much on the cusp of like we still got in trouble because of social media, but it isn't anywhere what it is right now. No, I mean, even still for me, like Twitter, what Twitter started to get big in what like twenty ten. Yeah, so I didn't really get on Twitter until I was like just about to get into high school. Mm-hmm. So like twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. Yep, that's when I got on Twitter because podcasting. You start a podcast, you're like, I'll be on Twitter now. X. As it's formerly known as Twitter. But, J.D., we're not here to talk about social media and the trends and what's going on and such. We're here to talk about the NFL draft. The draft room where we talk every two weeks about the NFL draft, switching off between NFL and NBA. Dave and I talked about the NBA last week. So, J.D., we're talking about the NFL this week. Got a interesting show, not a jam-packed, a little 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 snack bite a little little two topic show today before we get into everything let me go through housekeeping really quick if you're not in the discord already you can join the mvp discord for free down below in the description we have conversations going on with everybody from the mvp fandom hosts new hosts fans it's a community where you can all get together and you can get announcements you can get you can become a patron and get all of your announcements there too it's kind of your one-stop shop for everything MVP. If you want to support us, we have our Patreon page down below. Click that. A lot of perks like patrons watching us live right now as we record this podcast. You can watch the podcast as they are recorded. A lot of other cool rewards as well. Like uh, this guy is going to be hosting the Patreon podcast each and every month. So go ahead and check out those perks down below. On social media, we're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're also on X. You can go ahead and follow those links. Those will be down below as well. Um, Other things I'm trying to think of that I'm forgetting, Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify. You can check us out there as well. And I don't think I have... Oh, by the way, we'll be live as uh, we're coming up. It is draft month. We'll be live for the first two days of the NFL draft, Thursday and Friday. So come and hang out with us on those two days as we will be live for those. And for those of you watching, go check out my mock draft should be up at this point. JD, with all that being said, all that done, let's get into the first thing we're talking about today. It's, uh, as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, go Chargers, go. As we're talking about the LA Chargers. And the reason why I wanted to talk about the Chargers today, it's basically a what should they do with their fifth overall pick, because I have a quote here from Jim Harbaugh himself. The quote is, there's talk of four quarterbacks going in the first four picks. Boy, if that happens, that pick really becomes the number one pick in the draft. 
if four quarterbacks go in the first four picks, that's not like the fifth pick anymore. That's like the number one pick in the draft for teams that have a great quarterback already. End quote. And the Chargers being one of those teams, they have a great quarterback in Justin Air Bear, even though he has no weapons now. Austin Eckler is gone. Keenan Allen is gone. Mike Williams is gone. Everett is gone. Oh, ev- everybody's gone from the Chargers, except for Air Bear. They hung on to him. JD, the first thing I want to ask you is, is there going to be four quarterbacks taken in the first four picks of this draft? Is what Jim Harbaugh, is he trying to speak that into existence? I think, um, I think there's a very good possibility because there could be a team to trade up uh, to that fourth overall pick as mm-hmm. well to get a QB. Um, I mean, but he's right though. Like, I think he's, he is trying to wish it because if anything as well, he could be trying to get more value for that fifth overall pick because he could try to move it back or sorry, move back Mm -hmm. and use that as a trade asset and get probably more value than you'd expect. Because like you said, it could, would be considered like the first overall pick. If you don't need a quarterback, well, you have the pick of the litter when it comes to that pick. But I mean, I was looking at a mock draft. I believe it was from ESPN. Mm-hmm. And they had you guys trading to the fourth overall pick. Um, Let me guess for JJ McCarthy. Yeah, idiots. Yeah, so idiots. I, I do think that I mean, and then with the Marvin Harrison, uh, situation mm-hmm. where I guess like you know he just Kai. I think it was after our last video the one where we talked about it but kai Mm -hmm. basically informed me that the uh, buckeyes insiders were just saying that a bunch of nfl teams gave him a promise which is why he wasn't really Mm -hmm. i guess practicing or anything but every team that does not need a quarterback is going to give him a promise like let's be honest yeah so i mean i mean i could see a world where he uh you know like where he i guess falls per se like where mm-hmm. somebody like because i don't think the chargers will go marvin harrison i mm-hmm. think i think they'll go offensive line but yeah I, I i definitely think he he could be onto something with that i mean here's the thing for me so the way i'm looking at the at the draft of how i feel it's gonna go mm-hmm. as we're on to draft month is I am 100% confident three quarterbacks go in the top four picks. Hell, they're even going to go top three is going to be quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. There are going to be teams that take a quarterback. There's also going to be teams that trade up for a quarterback. The Vikings, now the thing I do agree with, people have them trading up. They are going to be aggressive in getting that quarterback of the future. I just don't think that it's J.J. McCarthy. I am buying in to the Tom Pelissero like an arrow that his report of the commanders really liking J.J. McCarthy is true. Caleb Williams won, J.J. McCarthy two. There's your one, two. The Patriots will probably trade out. Vikings or Broncos will trade in. I know that somebody, I know Dave's been pitching the, oh, well, the Vikings got Josh McCown, so they're going to go with Drake May. JD, if we draft Jake May or JJ McCarthy, I am going to hate my court. Like, it's just going to be like, then why didn't we keep Kirk Cousins at that point? If we're going to take JJ McCarthy or Drake May, why didn't we just keep Kirk Cousins and pay him the money? Because neither of them are going to win us the Super Bowl. So why not take the one that's proven? That's besides the point. We're not talking about the Vikings. I think that either the Vikings or Broncos trade up to three that it's either going to be Broncos trading up for Drake May or Vikings trading up for Jaden McDaniels or Jaden Daniels. I keep wanting to throw the Mick in there. Uh, Jaden Daniels from LSU. The Cardinals, though, are the pick to where I'm like, uh, could technically see them trading back. 25% chance they trade back. Mm -hmm. However, I just see them taking Marvin Harrison. I just see them taking Marvin Harrison and like really... 
I look at it in that case, it doesn't change what Jim Harbaugh said. I just don't think four quarterbacks go in the first round. The question is then, if you're the Chargers, let's say Marvin Harrison is the only non-quarterback taken off the board, where do you go? Because this is a team that obviously offensively, they have a ton, a ton of wide receivers that are not on this team. Arguably, they're two best wide receivers, not on the team anymore. You also have offensive line. They need to protect Air Bear as he's been sacked a lot, a lot over the past few seasons with the Brandon Staley offense. You also look at, let me pull up their other needs. You could argue that tight end is a big need. Brocky Bowers is there. Cornerback, defensive line, those two you'd probably trade back and go and get. So I'm going to put you in the driver's seat, J.D. You're making the pick. Let's say it's quarterback, 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 Marvin Harrison. Those are the first four picks. If you're the Chargers, you're the one making the pick. What are you targeting then at number five? Wait, sorry, you said that uh, Marvin Harrison's already taken? Yeah, quarterback, quarterback, okay. quarterback, Harrison are the first four okay. picks. Okay. Um, If it was me, I would probably lean... That's tough. I would, I, I, you know what? No, it's not tough. Um, I think I'll just, I would go Olu Fashanu. Mm-hmm. But again, like, I just think the reason why I originally said it was tough is because I'm on the side where I think the Chargers lack talent all over the place. I think their mm-hmm. defense is horrendous. So I think them going defense would be smart. Mm-hmm. But, Again, that offensive line is bad, and when you have a talent like Olu Fashanu or Joe Alt sitting there, like I'm more of an Olu Fashanu guy. Mm-hmm. But when you have two talents like that sitting there at offensive uh, offensive tackle, you can't you you can't miss on that. So I I think that'd be the smart pick. Yeah, and I mean for me, it's not that much of a difference. It's in my mind, I'm sitting there and I'm going okay. There's either two picks I'm making here. Wide receiver, I'm throwing that off the board almost. And the reason why is this draft is so deep at wide receiver, I could get a quality wide receiver on day two if I really needed one. I'm looking at it, though, and it's pretty much a coin flip for me because it's like, okay, am I going to go with Olu Fashanu? Because like you, I have Olu as my top, my top offensive tackle. Or am I going with Brock Bowers? Now, here's the thing that plays into this and why I would side with you and go with Olu Fashanu. And I will ask you this. So Everett left in free agency. However, the Chargers in free agency brought in Will Disley and brought in Hayden Hurst, two veteran tight ends. Do you think having those two tight ends should discourage the car or not the Cardinals discourage the chargers from even thinking about taking Brock Bowers at five? I wouldn't discourage it. Or I wouldn't say those guys would discourage them at all because I think those are replaceable players, Mm -hmm. but I just don't know if taking a tight end would be smart because again, I'm going to look at the Atlanta Falcons when they took Kyle Pitts for and I was obviously a massive Kyle Pitts guy. JD, you got to say it right. You got to do it right. If I'm talking about the Atlanta Falcons, <laughs> got to do the Simpsons bit, the Denver Broncos, <laughs> or the Denver Broncos. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I got to right. cut you off for the joke. No, because like, again, Kyle Pitts, I was super high on, again, top mm-hmm. five player in that year's draft. Dude, he's back. He's but, got Kirk Cousins. Take him in fantasy is uh, what I'm he, hearing. He, yeah, I mean, hopefully the injuries healed up. <laughs> yeah, just free, free that, free Kyle Pitts. <laughs> but, but again, I just don't know if it's smart for a team that lacks all this talent to put put it in a tight end because, and especially in a Jim Harbaugh offense, because he just he he's gonna run the ball, and and Brock Bowers, I mean, he's not bad at run blocking, mm-hmm. but he definitely he's that's not what he's going to get drafted for you know so i i just think that would be a big mistake by them to to draft him at five 
Now, before I give my opinion, I have a random uh, draft room fact of the dra- draft room fun fact of the day. You ready for this? Yeah. This is coming from Soapy in chat. Thank you, Soapy, for watching. Uh, he says in chat, random thing about the Chargers. One of their coaching staff members that's joining Harbaugh boards their dog and where Soapy works. Oh, really? It's a random fun fact. So, I so mean, Soapy, cool. Soapy knows a dog of uh, one of the members of the char- the I Chargers. Can't. I almost said the Chargers. I keep wanting to call them <laughs> the Cardinals. Why? Uh, I, I guess I guess that's one of the guys he probably brought with from him from Michigan. Yeah. Well, Soapy, I guess you're going to be losing a client, assuming he's moving <laughs> to to uh, I, L.A. <laughs> I hope he I hope he's bringing that dog with him to uh, California. And it's not like a well, we're going to board you here for the entire football season. I'll be yeah. back. Don't worry. I'll be back. Soaps. Poor would, uh, dog. Poor life, dog. Probably. If that's the question. I hope it's a good dog. I hope it's a nice dog. But but I digress. So for me. I kind of look at it, and the reason why it's a toss-up for me is whether you're taking Alt or Fashanu, not arguing who's one, who's two. Whoever you have at one, whoever you have at two, that's your personal board. The point that I'm making is the talent level to me is the same between a Fashanu and an Alt and a Brock Bowers. Like The way that we look at Marvin Harrison Jr. is... uh is how we should be looking at Brock Bowers where Brock Bowers could be that generational tight end talent that you don't see in the draft. Like I, I look at it this way. Think about Dalton Kincaid, right? Mm -hmm. He's been phenomenal in the NFL. You got him at 20. What was it? 21, 24 Mm, Brock Bowers is better than that. Brock Bowers has been better than Dalton Kincaid in college, getting a, Top five tight end, basically, and I and some people might say this is all hype, but it's like the question is, do you want a bona fide talent on the offensive line, or do you want a guy who can maybe potentially be the next Gronkowski? I take offensive line easily because, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, <laughs> Chargers you- fans are sitting there like, take the tight. Take the offensive tackle. No, Take the offensive yeah, tackle. Yeah. We've had weapons. We need to protect them. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. But also, again, you look at Kyle Pitts, who mm-hmm. was a bona fide, like he at the time he was yeah. the greatest tight end prospect, arguably that that you've seen. If the quarterback and, isn't protected, yeah, if the quarterback's not protected, then mm-hmm. it, what's it what's it going to matter? Or if the situation isn't right, yeah. You know, the reason why Dalton Kincaid succeeded mm-hmm. was because he went to Buffalo, who was already a good team. Mm-hmm. He didn't go to a team that had four wins and and just was garbage, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just unfortunately, like I'm not even a tight end hater, but because like I wish my team cared about the tight end position more, but it just I don't think it's it has it holds the same value as an offensive tackle mm-hmm. where I would love to have a an elite offensive tackle for five years on a rookie deal mm-hmm. instead of having to pay one for five years at like ninety million dollars. Now I will say, for those of you wondering, first off, Soapy says it sucks. They're moving this dog or they're moving their dog is really nice. So okay, he has taken the dog to California with him. Hi, everybody. Just want to take a quick moment out of today's podcast to tell you about our sponsor for today, BetUS, a sports book that has it all, whether it's basketball, hockey, football, soccer, whatever you like to bet on, BetUS has you covered, and they are offering our viewers and listeners today a 125% sign-up bonus just for using our link down below in the description. So go ahead, use that link down below and get your 125% sign-up bonus, BetUS. And now... Let's get back to the podcast. The Chargers have a butt ton of picks. They have obviously the fifth overall pick night one. They have two picks, one in the second, one in the third at 37 and 69. Nice. On uh, night two. And then on day three, they have two fourth round picks, 105 and 110. 110 coming from Da Bersh. The They have a fifth overall pick at 140, a sixth overall pick at 181, 
a seventh round pick at two fit two twenty five, and then a seventh round comp pick at two fifty three. So how many picks is that total? Did I say something funny, JD? Looks like yeah. you're laughing at me. What did I say? Yeah. What did I say? So you're like, you're like, they have a fifth overall pick at one. Oh, whatever. I said fifth. O- well, they do then, have the no, fifth no, overall pick. No, but, but then you're like, they have a sixth overall pick at whatever. And then you're like, they have a seventh oh, round I, pick. Dude, and then I, seventh round I, I, oh, I always do that. Instead of round, I always say overall. They yeah, have a fifth no, round, a sixth round. A se- I just see you lean back no, and I yeah. see the smirk. And I'm like, all right, what did I do? What, what, well, did, no, I, what did I say now? It, it was just be, the part that made me laugh. <laughs> it's like I was gonna let it go because I'm like, hey, whatever. But you said fifth overall, sixth overall, then seventh round, and then seventh <laughs> round. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> the brain knew what I was thinking. You, like, yeah, like it's the uh, it's the um, oh, what what's the old adage? The uh, um, uh, listen listen to what I mean, not what I say. Uh, that's exactly it. You got to listen to what I mean, not what I say. So total, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine picks. Like this team has options, I'll say, where mm-hmm. they could like whatever they take at five. This could be a team that because of their late round picks, they could be moving up for talent, too. So, like, they could easily, if they don't take tackle early, maybe they move up, they like someone in the second round. Or, like, if they don't take tight end, wide receiver, I expect them to either take or move up for a wide receiver, maybe two of them, at some point in this draft. Here's the other question that people would have, J.D. Let's say I'm going to get more specific with what I said the pick order is. And I'm going to need your help for this because this will be a joint adage. So the Bears at number one, they're taking Caleb Williams. Yep. The quarterback at number two, is it first off, is it the Commanders or is there going to be a trade for this quarterback? Um, Commanders. Okay. I'm saying they take J.J. McCarthy. Who do you think they that the quarterback would be? Drake May. Okay. So with that one... Mm, we'll hold that one for a second. This could be interesting. Patriots. Is it the Patriots that draft the quarterback or does the team trade up? Team trades up. It's the Vikings. They take Daniels. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then Harrison there. This is a two part question then kind of an either way you could go. So let's say the order is just what we said. Williams quarterback Daniels. Harrison, I say quarterback at two because there's two options here. May McCarthy. To me, it matters what quarterback is on the board, because if J.J. McCarthy is on the board. I don't know if a team like the Broncos will want to trade up. The Raiders could, but like. If McCarthy's the one that's available, I don't know what quarterback teams are going to want to trade up. If it's Drake May that's available at five, then all right. I'm telling you right now, the Denver Broncos, Sean Payton, they're making that call trying to move up to five. So in your in your opinion, J.D., does it matter who that quarterback that is available? Who's that fourth one available? That's going to pretty much determine if they trade back or not. You know, you kind of just sold me on something Go without ahead. even meaning to. Go ahead. So if it's McCarthy. Who's available? See, yeah. Okay. I could easily see a world where the Raiders trade up for mm-hmm. him because the Raiders love mid quarterbacks. <laughs> so it just it just fits their, their mold there. But like, I mean, yeah, like if it like, but if it's like the Broncos, let's say I, I could see J.J. McCarthy go into the Broncos, but I don't know if they would trade up to the fourth pick for him. I feel mm-hmm. like there is a decent chance that he uh, falls a little, like not falls, but mm-hmm. like he falls into their lap, I guess. Um, if it's Drake May, though, I could see a, a lot of teams trading up to the fourth overall pick mm-hmm. for him. The other thing, too, and this kind of goes into what we were talking about, right? is this is kind of like the Brock Bowers 
offensive tackle conversation all over again, because in my mind, it would come down to, okay, what's more important. And in this, in this situation, if I'm trading back, let's say in, in my world, I think Drake may is available. That means the Broncos are calling. That means you'd be moving back to the 12th overall pick. If I'm moving back to 12, that means I'm either choosing to go after the need of tackle later and passing on an alt, passing on a Fashanu. I'm telling you right now, if they trade back and a quarterback is taken, the Giants and the Titans need to send Jim Harbaugh a very good Christmas gift this year because I'm telling you right now if a team trades up with the Chargers and takes a quarterback Fashanu alt whatever order one's going to New York the other's going to Tennessee and those two franchises are going to be very happy because those are the two franchises that are like oh like I wish one of those tackles was going to be there at six and seven and the Titans may be the ones that are screwed if it's like a Fashanu and then an alt go boom boom back to back but with the chargers it's like i'm i'm then debating it's like do i just take the tackle the bona fide number one round pick tackle or am i trying to trade back and let's be honest i see a lot of tackles going in this first round honestly i could see a fuaga from oregon state latham a uh, Fatanu, a Bart, uh, Barton, a Guyton, a Mims. What's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a possibility that eight, eight tackles go in this first round. That means you're looking back for like a Jordan Morgan. You're looking at a Patrick Paul, a Kinsley Samatalia from BYU. You're looking at a, uh, Pooney, a Fisher, like these later on guys that it's like, Am I going to go with that or am I going to try to get one of the top two corners in either Mitchell or Arnold? Because it comes down to then what's more important, defense or offense with this Chargers getting one of the best, the best, not tight end, best offensive tackle prospects or one of the best cornerback prospects? Because that's what you're doing if you're trading back with the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you're right, but. Like, here's the thing. I mean, with, like, Mitchell and Arnold, mm-hmm. they're both really good. I just, I don't know how I feel about taking them, like, early in the first round. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I, personally, I would take them, you know, like, I I, I value them as, like, anywhere from the 15th to like 25th mm-hmm. pick which i know i which i know some people think that's crazy it's just i don't know what's just what i see i don't think they're i don't think they're super elite mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean and again defense is always important but i just yeah like i i i think that with the deep what are you looking at now? I'm laughing because Soapy made it. I'm, I'm going to say it. I shouldn't. Okay, okay. Uh, he made a Raiders joke in, in the live chat. He said, whatever player is going to get arrested is who the Raiders are drafting. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's, like, and that's, and that's why I laughed. I like started yeah. to smile. Cause it's like, he ain't wrong. <laughs> Mid quarterbacks and criminals. They're, they go hand in hand. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, like I, I, I think, you would value the offensive line more, mm-hmm. but it it's definitely a toss up. It's just it all really depends on who. Because the thing is with the defense is like it's kind of a broad approach, because like it could be any position, right? It could be mm-hmm. like I, Dallas Turner, or you know, or yeah, like you said, you have Arnold. Yeah. So, but. I'm going to throw this out here, and this is why the cornerback one, I think, is more interesting than the tight end. Mm -hmm. Because personally, with how I see the draft going, J.D., just how I I, I said offensive line, I meant meant tight end. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Did you mean tight end? Yeah. Oh, because we're talking offensive tackle compared to tight end. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, How I said there's going to be, I think, a lot of tackles taken in the first round Mm -hmm. 
there's also a lot of teams, the Lions, the Packers, the Colts, the Jaguars, the Raiders, the Rams. You look at the Eagles, the Steelers. There's a lot of teams. Take the Raiders out because they could be going quarterback. But there's a lot of teams that cornerback is their number one need. To where just like I see a lot of tackles being taken in the first round, I see basically in the 20s, it's just going to become cornerback central. Where there's a possibility Mitchell, Arnold, Wiggins, DeGene, McKinstry, and even like an... um a Ennis Rakeshaw, Rakeshaw Jr. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six corners in the first round could be taken as well. Mm-hmm. That's what at least 12 of the picks, 12 of the 32 picks are going to be offensive tackle and cornerback. Yeah. Well, that, even when like I was doing my mock draft, that's kind of mm-hmm. something that I noticed. Like, mm-hmm. like for me personally, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it, but like, I mean, yeah, I had like, I think I had like seven offensive linemen going Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, I'm trying to fit like these other, I had like other positional players fall. And I'm like, well, I just don't see how a team will value Mm so-and-so over this offensive tackle. Yeah. You know, especially again with like how crazy free agency has been the last two years with Mm -hmm. offensive line. Mm -hmm. I think teams like, okay, well, we need to hope that we get a rookie to come in right away and be good. That way it saves us, like I said earlier, like $90 million. And the thing that I'm wondering is, will the chargers, will the chargers try to get a like bang for their buck situation of like, I mentioned to you how many picks they have. Mm -hmm. Do they either option a let's keep the pick at five, go with tackle. Then later on in the first package, our second round pick, with some of those later round picks, maybe like the bears fourth round pick. And then like one or two of the, uh, of the day three picks to try to move up into the first to either grab a wide receiver or to either grab a cornerback. Like that could also be an option of let's trade up. Or the other option is let me trade back to 12 with the Broncos. I'm using them as the example here. could be anybody. Let me trade back get some more picks. Let's say at 12, we go cornerback and then I'm using some of the extra ammo or I can use some picks because I've got some extra ammo now to then move up my second, move it up into the first to get one of those end of the round or late pick tackles to where could we be looking at the chargers getting a tackle in a corner, both in the first round. I don't know about a tackle and a corner. Um, or I think, a tackle I think, and a wide receiver. Well, because you said take a quarterback at like eleven, right? Yeah, it, it's, e- or, it's, or, it's either it's either you take the offensive tackle at fifth, yeah, and then trade up for the corner or the wide receiver, or you're taking a cornerback at like twelve oh, and well, trading oh, up for the tackle or the wide receiver. I, th- I thought you said quarterback. No, corner, <laughs> corner. Yeah. CB, yeah. not QB. Yeah. Yeah. They, they got okay. Air Bear. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> looking to replace Air Bear. <laughs> That's why I was confused. I was like, wait. No, no, no. Cor- but, um, cor- corner, cornerback. Okay. Looking at the but yeah, corner. So, I mean, honestly, that wouldn't be bad. But again, like with how, because if I, I, I mean, yeah, the Chargers haven't drafted great over the last, well, since they drafted Herbert, you know? Like they haven't drafted well. Jim so, Harbaugh's in time, baby. Yeah, I mean, I know, but like, still same. Is it not the same GM? I I, I think it's the same GM. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like so for me, if I was a Chargers fan, I would just rather take the bona fide fair thing talent mm-hmm. at offensive tackle and either Alt or Fashanu. Um, but if it was really like again, like. If it was any other team, I wouldn't. You are wrong. What? Joe Ho- Joe Horitz or Hortit Horitz. Um, he comes over as the he was um for the from 2019 to 2023 was the director of player personnel with the Ravens. 
Um, he's okay. pretty, I'll be honest, as an executive, he's been with the Ravens from 1998 to oh. 2023. He has spent time as their personal assistant, a scout, a director of college scouting, and a director of player personnel from 98 to 2023, and is now the GM of the Chargers. I mean, honestly, the Ravens have had some good teams and good draft picks, so I mean, maybe... And he's the one maybe, scouting okay. them. <laughs> yeah, so then maybe, honestly, you know, then trading, trading back, uh, not like, yeah, trading the fifth pick, I think would be kind of smart then, because I still think you mm-hmm. can get a good starting caliber offensive lineman at, like, let's say anywhere from pick 15 to 25, I think you can get a solid uh, starter. You're not going to get that, you know, you're not going to get Alt or Fashanu mm-hmm. or or maybe even Latham, but you could still, maybe a Mims will fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, of what, What's his name? Fauga? Fauga? Uh, I, I can't Fuga, the, yeah. the Oregon yeah. State kid. Yeah. I don't know if he'll make it that far, but this like this would be a good year to be able to draft a starting caliber mm-hmm. um tackle later. So yeah, then you get a corner, like you get like an Arnold or a Mitchell at like let's say the fifteenth pick or whatever, and then an offensive lineman later on. Like, yeah. I hate when you go to click on a Reddit post and it's like you can't open it. Um now the one thing that I will say is there's a difference with the Ravens. This guy has been the director of player personnel and basically a scout and with the scouting department. Ravens have drafted good players. To draft good players, you need to scout good players. But let's be honest, who's pulling the trigger with Boston or not Boston with Baltimore? Ozzy Newsom. Ozzy yeah. Newsom is the one pulling the trigger this will be the first time that Horitz is actually pulling the trigger. This is mm-hmm. the guy where he's the one. And and I don't know how they're going to operate. Are they going to operate where it's like he's the one making the final decision? Is it like what um, Detroit's trying to do where it's like, hey, like H- Johnson and uh, shoot. Why am I blanking on his name? I love him as a head coach. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell thank you. Johnson and Campbell are kind of working as that cohesive unit mm-hmm. over there. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they like how they draft. What do they value? What what what's the way we're? I'm confident that the Chargers now, knowing the information that we know, are going to do their due diligence and scout. It's just okay. Decision making. How's he going to be with that? Is he going to be a good decision maker, bad decision maker? What's going to happen? We're going to have to wait and see. JD, let's switch over for a second. This is the topic that we're going to use to end the show. Today, there was a big trade. I'll be honest. Slept in today. <laughs> I woke up and I'm like, whoa, Stefan D-. Like It was one of those things where I opened X and I'm scrolling and I didn't really see it. I had to go over to trending to then see it. Then I'm like, what? Wait, Stefan Diggs got traded. Like I saw more memes about it. than I saw actual announcements about it, mm-hmm. which should tell you something. But basically Stefan Diggs is now a member of the Houston Texans. And he got traded there for a 2025 second round pick, which is basically nothing. Mm. In terms of the wide receiver, he could be like, this is a wide receiver that I thought he was going to garner a bigger haul than a second round pick next year. JD, I know that with Steph, like, Stefan Diggs, Minnesota Vikings, and Stefan Diggs, Buffalo Bills, two completely Stefan Diggses. His baggage in Buffalo has been mighty, but I thought he was going to garner a bigger trade package. So for me, I'm looking at it and going, wow, you're really trading him for nothing. Like, I would love to take a second round flyer, not even this year, next year, on Stefan Diggs 
with the potential that he could add to the Texans. Not what we're debating here. What we're talking about, though, is the Buffalo Bills, because we're talking about this year's draft, J.D. What I want to ask you is, is this a bona fide yes Absolutely, they've traded them. We're expecting Buffalo to go wide receiver with their twenty, their like what mid twenties first round pick. Yeah, I was uh, well, I was at work when the trade happened, and I was mm-hmm. actually my boss is a Bills fan, mm-hmm. so I was talking to him about it, and uh, yeah, he he was like, so what, like, what are we gonna do at wide receiver? And I'm like, well, now you guys, like, the Bills have to take a wide receiver. I don't think there's any way around it. No, Like, luckily for them, there mm-hmm. is going to be talent there. But they, if they, if the season started today, I would say they probably have the worst, maybe next to the Chargers, like, worst wide receiver room in the league. I So I will say, right now their wide receivers are, you have... They're they're starting three right now, according to our lads. You have on the outsides, Justin Justin Schroeder and Khalil Shakur. Then you have Curtis Samuel in the slot. Your secondary wide receivers are Mac Holland coming over from Atlanta, Andy Isabella, and Tyrell Shavers. Yeah, that's garbage. (laughs) That's garbage in my opinion, man. Like, um, but. Yeah, like I just I think they they need a number one receiver. I I don't hate the move for them, or mm-hmm. I I don't hate the move because next year I mean who knows what next year's draft is, but a second round pick is valuable. So you can move up, you can you can move up again in this draft, mm-hmm. you know, by using that with um using that pick, or um. Yeah, like you just stock up on wide receivers now because you needed to do something. The Bills have always been, or not always, but the Bills have been a team recently who, who, they they needed their big players to show up, and Diggs mm-hmm. wasn't that. So now, so now you you have a chance to kind of get a new number one receiver on a cheap deal, mm-hmm. and hopefully he can ball out. You like I, again? I love Keon Coleman, but. Who knows if, if they'll value him. That's exactly the dude I have them. Like, I was literally going to say, that's the dude yeah. I have them drafting with that first round pick. Yeah. I will say, though, one thing I didn't realize when I recorded my mock, I'm an idiot. I mentioned Gabe Davis when I was recording it, and I forgot that he's no longer with the team. I yeah. thought he was still with Buffalo. Uh, but yeah, Keith. Keon, Col- or Keon Coleman, the kid from uh, Florida State, he's exactly the one I was I want them yeah. to go with later on. I love For that sure. kid. Love that kid. Yeah, because again, I know a lot of people are, have kind of been down on him since the season ended, mm-hmm. but I still think he's he can be a number one receiver and a in a damn good one. Um, you know, I I've praised he could him. be a bona fide number one wide receiver. That's what I yeah. like about him. Yeah, exactly, Put- and obviously. Put it on my back, coach. That's the kind of kid he is. I love yeah. it. He, like people talk about how slow he is, and I use the same, mm-hmm. like, personally. And again, maybe this is just a hot take or whatever. Mm. But personally, I don't really care about your forty-yard time in in the combine because I care more about how fast are you at running routes. Mm-hmm. Do you play the game fast? I don't care about how fast you can run in a straight line with nobody defending you. How, how's John, how's John Ross doing that for you? Exactly. <laughs> how's, John Ross, how, how's John Ross? Uh, I that's knew exactly where you were going, by the way. Yes, that exactly. <laughs> There's been tons of players who run fast, but can't mm-hmm. play the game of football. Yeah. You know, go be a track star somewhere then. I don't know. But no. So Again, Keon Coleman would fit that mold. He'll be mm. able. To, he can high point the football. He's a he's a crisp route runner. He is. He can play a little bit of of the slot if need be, but I don't mm. like him there. And he he has Josh Allen throwing him footballs. I mean, you know, like I think that could be a very good pairing. But again, but even if you don't want to go Coleman, you have, um, who's the uh. 
you, who was the kid you were talking about? Franklin. Uh, not the, yeah, Franklin. You, so Franklin could even. I'm going to cut you off here, JD. Yeah. You know what I could see them doing? What? They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten picks in this year's draft. Mm. What if? What if? They're like, we're going to take Coleman at 25. We're going to let the rest of the first round play out. Not many picks. If he's there on day two, like end of the first round ends, Franklin's still there. I'm taking my pick and a bunch of my other picks trying to move up to the top of the second to get Troy Franklin. Could you imagine if they snapped Coleman and Franklin? Boom, boom. Then with Samuel, there's your wide receiver core again. Yeah. You've stacked them right back up. Exactly. I mean, like, I, I don't hate that. I feel like maybe some Bills fans will like, oh, well, why are you doubling down on my receiver? If you can get two. Because you lost wide your receivers. top two wide receivers. Exactly. You lost Gabe Davis. You've so, lost Stefan Diggs. But, but that, that'd be the, but the reason why I said that is because you don't really see that with the draft. This right? is a really... deep class, though. No, exactly. So that's why, like, I, I, that, that's what I'm saying. So again, when you have, again, in my opinion, almost zero talent at the mm-hmm. position, I don't hate doubling down on the same position mm-hmm. in back-to-back rounds, I th- especially in this wide receiver class where mm-hmm. you could get potentially two number ones in in the in the the first two rounds. Yeah, and I mean, I, I like, I just, I absolutely love, like, you. We are talking about two of the top wide receivers I love in this year's class. The thing I love about Troy Franklin is he's 6'2". I think it's what, 6'2", 215? But the way he could run over the, like, the way he runs routes over the middle, ah, chef's kiss. Like, I just can't wait to see him wreak havoc over the middle of the field against NFL defenses. Maybe not year one, maybe he develops into it, but like, I loved him at Oregon. It's it's weird, too. I've noticed this. This is kind of a quick aside. Um, I may be the biggest Pac-12 stan in this draft, mm-hmm. mainly because of my love for Michael Penix. Like, I watched <laughs> so much. Like, I watched so many Washington games because of him that – I was able to see what Roma Dunes could do. I was able to see what a Jalen Polk, a Jalen McMillan could do. I was able to see Troy Franklin and what he could do to where I'm just like all of the, all of the pac 12 guys that are wide receivers. I'm just like, I absolutely love them. Yeah. Cause you watch so much of them. Yeah. Could be a good or a bad thing. I also can't wait to see, like I said, where Polk and McMillan go. They're going to be like third round day three guys, maybe. But I just I can't wait to see where they end up because they're going to be good talents. Like they could also be the other thing. Let's take a wide receiver in the first. There is so much talent in the wide. Like looking at wide receiver, like let's say fifth top 50 on. Mm -hmm. You have Ricky Persall, Roman Wilson, Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan, Jermaine Burton, Malachi uh, Corley, Tez Walker, Johnny Wilton, Javon Baker, Malik Washington. All those guys bangers? No. But I like Ricky. I like Polk. I like McMillan. Walker's interesting to me. Like, there are guys in this class that you could get later. Exactly. Yeah. Anything you think? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, well, no, that's what I was just gonna say, right? Like, I think you can, I think you can still like, if, if even if you wanted like a slot receiver too, mm-hmm. which I mean, I think you can easily find that. Like, you don't need to, you don't need to completely overhaul your, or I shouldn't say overhaul. You don't need to mm-hmm. draft three wide receivers. Obviously, this year, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't really think that's probably the good way to go. But, but you need like two you saying, if you're Buffalo. Yeah, no, exactly two. So I think honestly, there there really shouldn't be any way else with it, especially with you mm-hmm. listing the names that you just listed, mm-hmm. because there's definitely going to be guys to fall. Especially if we talked about how many offensive tackles are going to be in the first round and potentially cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. That like I could see a world where the wide receivers start to like fall into the second round, and then 
like you said, the Bills will have the pick of the litter when it comes to their first round pick and their second round pick. Question for you, and this is going to be a bold, a bold, bold question. Mm-hmm. Let's say number nine rolls around. The Bears are up. Bears could go wide receiver. Mm-hmm. But could you see any chance the Bills go, you know what, we're taking a swing. I don't care if it's going to cost me this year's first and a future first. I want to trade up to nine, get Roma Dunes, pair Josh Allen up with one of the top wide receivers in this class. Would that be a smart move or a bad move for the Bills? I think that would be a smart move because right now the Bills, I mean, for a team that's supposed to be going for it, they've lost a lot. Mm-hmm. And especially again, like I said, wide receiver room. So again, replacing Diggs with Aroma Dunes, that mm-hmm. would be a great fit. That again, there's your number one wide receiver, somebody who has top ten wide receiver potential. So has the work ethic. Yeah, has the work ethic. Something that you could say Diggs probably didn't in Buffalo. But um yeah, I think that like again, you if you're the Bills, you need to you need to be going for it here. You haven't made it past the divisional round in the Josh Allen era. Mm-hmm. And that's just quite honestly, that's embarrassing. For whatever reason, not blaming him per se, but Patrick Mahomes team, does exist. Also yeah. overtime exists. Yeah, and also they had home field advantage in the snow game against yeah, the Bengals and but, they got but, mopped. But 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 Josh so, Allen in overtime never goes well. He's afraid well, of it, JD. Yeah, well, I don't say get good because <laughs> good kid. Because I, I mean, you don't want to get good kid. Well, yeah, because again, I don't care about the excuses. Mm-hmm. I mean, like again, for ever all the praise that the Bills consistently get every year, Super Bowl favorites, mm-hmm. Super Bowl favorites, they haven't made it past the divisional round. And I get the Chiefs are a thing, but guess what? The Chiefs are beatable. I promise you. So, mm-hmm. like, the, again, so the. Saying that, that this isn't supposed to be a rant about that, yeah. but I think the Bills should be trying to go for it, and going for an Adunes would definitely be the step in the right direction. Oh, you know what just made me really happy that I was going to end this with, JD, and this is going to be my little mic drop? Um, So, about four years ago, March 16th, actually, you know, and almost four years ago exactly, uh, oh. about a month later, the Vikings traded Stefan Diggs along with the seventh round pick, a seventh round pick in 2020 that turned into uh, Dane, jo- Dane Jackson. The Bills gave up for Stefan Diggs. A first overall pick in 2020, a fifth round yeah, pick in round. 2020. Yeah, first round. First yeah, round okay. pick in 2020, fifth round pick in 2020, a um, sixth round pick in 2020. And a fourth round pick in 2021. You want to know what makes that an instant winner for the Vikings after him now being traded for a second next year? Yeah. Guess who that first round pick was? JJ. JJ. Yeah. So basically, you gave us, we traded Stefan Diggs, got Justin Jefferson. I know Viking haters are going to be like, yeah, but you're going to trade Justin Jefferson anyway because you don't want to be there. <laughs> he, he's still going to be a Viking because we're going to get yeah. the quarterback of the future. He's going to be happy because people are, are going to be throwing bah! unless we get J.J. McCarthy. If we get J.J. McCarthy, <laughs> he ducks. ain't getting any. But like if we get no, J.J. You're... McCarthy or Drake May, he ain't getting any bombs thrown to him because he's going to have to, you know, slow down. J.D., quick, quick rant here from me. I absolutely hate Drake May after watching film. The thing oh, that infuriates me the most is how you could have a wide receiver running full sprint and he needs to slow down to catch the ball because you don't have the arm strength to hit him in stride. You mean J.J. McCarthy? No, I'm talking Drake May. I watched his film, J.D., and there were okay. numerous times that North Carolina wide receivers were in a full sprint running downfield, had to slow down because he couldn't get them the ball in stride. It was making my head blow to where I was like, how can you not like as a wide receiver that would infuriate me. I'm running down. I have my man beat. I need to slow down. Let my man back into the play because you can't hit me in stride. And this is going to be a top five pick in the draft. 
Yeah. Just saying. Slant and passes. Slant passes. That's all they're going to be able to hit. Slants over the middle. Slants over the middle. Anything over 40 yards, I don't want them doing it. I don't want them doing it. Like, yet again, maybe it's just the film. I watched every single game from Drake May back, and I Dang. saw it numerous times. I can't imagine why anyone would want him or J.J. McCarthy as their quarterback. Give me Michael Penix. Hell, Give me Jaden Mc like Daniels. I'm not even a huge Daniel stand. Give me him. Give me him over Michael <laughs> Penix. Give me yeah. him. It like, like I would take Penix over everyone, but I would even take Daniels over May over McCarthy. Rant aside, that that just who that just came out of me. But my point being, us getting JJ sending Diggs to the uh, Bills, we win. Yep. We win because the Bills got the what out of them, and then they, they they get a second round pick in a draft in twenty twenty five. Yeah, pretty pretty much, man. I mean, like I said, the, like I again, this is, I'm not gonna get into it because this mm. is what we're here for. It, but like, <laughs> I don't think Diggs. I don't think Diggs is really, that good. He doesn't no. I don't think he's that good anymore. I think dude, he's still he's still him. watching the Chiefs celebrate. Yeah, he's still standing well, on the field, just watching him celebrate, dude. Even even my buddy that's in the Discord, that's a Texans fan, he's like, cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's an all right player. I saw like, somebody tweet that the Texans are doing what the Chargers should have been doing for Justin Air Bear. It's like, dude, Nico Coll- Collins, Tank Dell, they were good. Stefan Diggs is good. But let's not act like any of them are like if 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 Stefan Diggs becomes Minnesota Vikings Steph Diggs, mm-hmm. yeah. If he no shows like he's done a lot in uh, Buffalo, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, like Nico Collins and Tank Dell were good, but let's not act like they're elite. Let's not I mean, act like Tank they're elite Tank, wide receivers. Tank, 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 if he has what season like he did this year, I think we can kind of consider him elite. But yeah, but at this point, at this point yeah. right here, yeah, at this point we gotta wait. But. This is kind of more to do with the draft. So mm-hmm. I'll say this, though. Closing to point of, for JD. Yeah. So with the Texans, because I want to get this off my chest, I was a big Texan stand coming mm-hmm. into this this past year. I was high on mm-hmm. them. And I still I still like them. Mm-hmm. But I'm getting a little worried with what they're doing when it comes to the draft because they're kind of – they're now just like – they made the playoffs great. But now I think they're trying to rush their window a little bit here. That's what and, happens. That's what happens yeah, when you start to win. I know, and I maybe maybe I'll be in the wrong, but mm-hmm. I just think it's risky to put to be this bullish on a team that had one good year, and then and who lost in the playoffs, and then now you're mortgaging all your future essentially mm-hmm. on on this team when yep. it comes to like they. I think they could still use like they still need to fix their defense. And now you don't really have the the top draft capital. Like I know it's next year, mm-hmm. but that second round pick could have been a cornerback for your team next year. And now you might have a wash Stefan Diggs. I'm I'm okay taking a second round flyer on Steph Diggs. Yeah, like I don't I am hate perfectly it. I okay just, with ta- like my a, ears are perked. The thing is, the only and this will be my only retort to it is uh I really like the Texans coach. No, I like, I really like, it is one of those things where I think they're a well-coached team. I think they have a plan. This is what happens. You get success. Mm -hmm. You got to accelerate that window. Winning only accelerates. It never decelerates. Uh, Let us know, obviously what you guys think though, down below in the comment section, about anything we talked about today, JD and I will be live for night one and night two of the NFL draft. I want to thank everyone for listening patrons. Soapy for commenting uh, in the live chat. You guys can watch our podcast live by checking out the Patreon down below discord. Join that as well. Hit us up on social medias. Listen to our podcast, Apple podcast and Spotify. Leave us a review. Uh, my NFL mock draft will probably be up as this is going up. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you guys for everything you guys do. And as always, have a good day, everybody. See ya. As always, we'd like to thank the people that make these videos possible. Our patrons whose names are displayed on the screen. Now, if you would like to become a patron, go ahead and click the Patreon icon in the bottom right. And if you'd like to check out another video from MVP sports, hit the video 
in the upper left. As always, thanks for watching.